Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bon appétit. So we're going to focus on the, uh, the liver imaging, focusing on elastography, and I'm, I'm not sure if you're all familiar with either elastography or the Toshiba system, so I'm, I'm going to go back for a few slides to basics. So the aim of elastography is to try to apprehend tissue consistency, which is something that we do all day and every day. We touch things and we understand if these things are stiff or loose or uh, more or less uh, uh, smooth. And this is something we've learned as a medical doctor to know the difference between normal and abnormal. The problem is it's completely subjective, something that we cannot transmit this impression to others. And the aim of elastography is just to convert this into an objective criteria. So how do we do that? Well, we throw a stone into the lake. And if we do that, we create a shear wave. This is something that moves towards the, the patient or the tissue. And we are going to try to apprehend this shear wave. And by analyzing the properties of this shear wave, we're going to deduce the uh, mechanical properties of the tissue. Is it stiff? Is it not stiff? Uh, with elastography, uh, uh, we can use ultrasound. I'm not going to go into uh, details, but basically what we do is we use the ultrasound beam to focus at different points, and we create tiny shear waves that are going to combine into large ones, and then the same probe is going to more or less film this uh, shear wave, the propagation of this shear wave, and to deduce the uh, uh, viscoelastic properties of the tissue. If you do not know the Aplio series, well, uh, this is how it, what it uh, looks like. You can, uh, by just pressing a button, uh, uh, a box is appearing on your B mode, and this box uh, is an elastogram. It gives you a point-by-point -point measurement of the liver stiffness. And it's a, there is a, a color scale, of course. The bluer, the better. The redder, the stiffer. You have two modes on this series. Either the one shot means that you press the button and automatically you have just this box appearing. And then you can place a region of interest to calculate the stiffness values. Or you have a multi-shot uh, uh, possibility. It means that uh, every second the uh, system will refresh and it will have a new elastogram. And you can choose which one is the best for you. Uh, you can have either stiffness uh, provided in kilopascal, which is a pressure unit, and this is something that is more or less consensual, or you can use the speed if you, if you like. Uh, I told you that it, there is a, a color scale, and this is uh, an example of four patients. You see from the left to the right, a normal liver to the cirrhotic liver, and you see that there is a clear shift from the blue to the red. So even purely qualitatively, you can know if there is something wrong or not. And then you place a region of interest, and you will have an objective measurement of the liver stiffness. The problem is that sometimes we encounter problems. The first kind is this one. It's a very well-known uh, subcapsular artifact. Red is not to be measured, so this is something you know and you just place your region of interest below. But sometimes you see things like that. It's hard to get a clear, uh, correctly filled box. The elastogram is not very good. This is something that can be related to the patient. And you have trouble uh, knowing where to place your region of interest. Something interesting provided by the Toshiba system is this, is a visualization of the propagation of the waves. And if you want to place your measurement, you have to do it in region where the lines appear parallel. And so this is what it looks like. This is a normal liver, but uh, you see the, the uh, artifact. You skip this one. And here you see on the right-hand side the uh, parallelism of the lines, and you can choose the proper area to place your region of interest. It gives you confidence in your measurement. And for the previous example, a very bad one, well, you wanted to place it somewhere here, but thanks to that, you know that it's probably better to place it here than there. So it's something that's quite useful and very intuitive to use. And I want to stress the fact that elastography or stiffness measurement in hepatology is extremely, extremely important, and this is something that we uh, uh, need to understand as radiologists because hepatologists, they use it every day, every day for all the patients. What they do is they use this as a sort sorting tool. They explore virtually all patients with a chronic liver disease, and they try to sort patients into different categories. I'm showing you this algorithm, but there are several that's been published, and this is a very, very uh, extremely uh, consensual way of managing patients. You perform a measurement. Either the measure is strictly normal, you know the patient does not have cirrhosis, 
you do not have to perform biopsy. Or on, on the other way uh, around, you can have very, very abnormal measure, and then you know there is cirrhosis, you do not need biopsy. And in between the gray area for these patients, you will still need a biopsy. But thanks to that uh, way of managing patients, more than 50, 60% of liver biopsy are not performed uh, uh, nowadays. And it's interesting because there are algorithm and there are standardization and Consensual threshold, though this is something that you can do here and you can communicate with your colleagues worldwide. And, but it's not performed with ultrasound elastography. It's performed with uh, transient elastography, which was the first technology that's been developed, which is virtually the end slapping on the belly. It's a tiny probe that pushes the skin of the patient, creating a, a shear wave propagating along the liver, and then the same probe will measure the speed of this shear wave. So it's not elastography. It's an elastometric measurement. You do not have an, an image of the liver. What you have is something like that, quite strange. You see the, uh, here is the skin, the depth, and you see the, the displacement of the wave. And at the end of the day, what you just want to know is this. This is a number, a median of the liver stiffness. And there are consensual thresholds, and you can sort your patient, classify your patient in two different uh, categories of fibrosis. And this is something that is performed every day. We need to do that with ultrasound elastography. This is why we joined a prospective multicentric trial, and I'm going to show you the first results uh, uh, performed in, in Europe, and uh, we aimed at comparing the uh, diagnostic performance of the Toshiba system with the reference method, which was here, the transient elastography. So all patients, and it was a wide inclusion, all patients explored by transient elastography for any kind of chronic liver diseases had on the same day Toshiba elastography measurement and the transient elastography. And to date, we have more than 650 patients that's been included, and I do not have the results for all the uh, population, but I'm going to focus on the French uh, population, the, the patient we included, uh, 280 patients, so it gives you a fair idea of the uh, ability of the system. You see that the patients that were included were very representative of this kind of population, slightly more male, 52 years of age, and you see that the etiology, etiologies were also very uh, uh, classical. When we perform a direct comparison between uh, the two, you see that, uh, well, transient elastography is here, Toshiba system is here, uh, very, very similar. It's interesting, but it's not very informative. So I plotted the uh, uh, different, uh, the correlation between the measurement, and you see that there was an excellent correlation. Interestingly, you see that the, the slope is not exactly here as it should be. There is a systematic bias towards lower value for the Toshiba system. It means that when the transient elastography measurement increases, the Toshiba system also increases, but slightly less. So um, we'll have a slight under measurement of the liver stiffness. But it's not, it's interesting from a physical point of view, but it's not very important from a clinical point of view because you see that m most patients are here in the lower values and in this area, the correlation is excellent. And even though the slope is not exactly at 45 degrees, it's more or less the same measurement for the two system. Uh, I also perform the, here, I plot the intertechnic agreement and you see that uh, the, the, the agreement is excellent, except for high values, as I told you before. But if we focus on the clinical liver stiffness range below 20 kilopascal, well, the, the agreement between the two is, is very good. This is the uh, distribution of fibrosis categories of the population based on the transient elastography measurement. Of course, we had more uh, F0 and F1, more absent or mild fibrosis. This is due to the prospective uh, uh, inclusion design of the study. And this is how the Toshiba system performed. I plotted here the percentage of patients correctly, correctly, if you may, uh, classified uh, according to the transient elastography threshold. So it's very good for the F0, F1, slightly less for the high grade of fibrosis due to this slight underestimation I showed you before. And uh, bottom line, three out of four patients were uh, um, classified with the Toshiba system exactly as the transient elastography system. There was a 10% overestimation and a 15% slight underestimation of fibrosis category. Uh, but this is because we use the transient elastography thresholds and because we observed a systematic deviation of the Toshiba system, probably we need just to adapt and to change the thresholds. And I performed a, a sub-analysis changing the thresholds and it significantly increased the performance of the system. If 
I know the new thresholds based on the new uh, uh, technology where I correctly reclassify most of the patients. So this system, the system uh, actually works uh, very, very well. Uh, we still need to process more analysis to see if there is difference between the different cause of chronic liver disease because this is something that's been reported with transient elastography and probably, uh, of, of, of course, we'll need to compare the, these results with a, uh, a liver biopsy. So to summarize, really for those who don't know the system, it's very easy to use, very easy to, very user-friendly, just press the button and it helps you to uh, position your region of interest in the right position thanks to this uh, uh, visualization of the propagation of the waves. And the one-shot mode, which is the easiest one, is probably the one you will use because it's very, very easy, very uh, quick. Uh, we observed an excellent correlation between the transient elastography and the uh, Toshiba Shawa elastography system with a slight tendency to underestimate measurement, but with a limited uh, uh, consequence on clinical uh, implication uh, for the patient. Um, I wanted to just open uh, a, a, a window or toward two other uh, applications because this is something very hot, hot topic in the hepatology community. It's to go beyond fibrosis because now we know that shear wave elastography, transient elastography, uh, or magnetic resonance elastography are very accurate for the quantification of fibrosis, but we need to go further. And the first step is to quantify fat. You know that it's a very, very important major health problem worldwide with the increase of the NAFLD epidemic. So we know that we need to detect and quantify liver steatosis. Used to be liver biopsy, that was the reference standard, and probably still is in most institutions, but there, were, there was a recent shift toward MR imaging, and it's now more and more recognized that MR imaging is the new reference technique for the quantification of fat. Um, based on the transient elastography technology, uh, there is a parameter that's called the controlled attenuation parameter, or CAP. Uh, that's uh, the blue number here. So far, hepatologists, they performed this because it's automatically provided by the system, but they did nothing with that. But recent studies and recent meta-analysis, even one meta-analysis published very recently, showed that this parameter is a standardized, non-invasive measure for hepatic steatosis. So this is probably something that hepatologists will start doing and start telling their patients. And so far, we do not have really something uh, to answer this question, a solution to address this, this problem. Interestingly, uh, and of course it's still work in progress and we'll need to validate this tool, but this tool already is uh, provided by uh, the Toshiba system. A, it's the measurement of the attenuation of the ultrasound beam uh, because it's more or less what the cap does. So here you press a different button. There is a new box that's showing on your B mode. You see the color is slightly different and you can place the box here whatever you, wherever you want and the, this yellow line is the line on, on which the uh, attenuation is measured. And you... Uh, you have a, a number that is more or less exactly like uh, what the CAP is doing. Interestingly, and to avoid artifacts or something that could disturb the measurement, the system autom automatically exclude uh, speckles or reverberation artifacts. So, you, for instance, here you see a vessel or vessel, and this is something that the system will uh, uh, eliminate. Or this is a phantom, and you see that the, uh, the system automatically uh, removes the area that we're supposed to change the attenuation measurement. So it's interesting because it's something that's not very frequently or not at all available on uh, ultrasound uh, machines. And now we need uh, to validate this tool, but it's interesting to know that it's there. And the second thing I wanted to show you, and uh, it will be the end of my presentation, it's inflammation. Inflammation is the graal of uh, non-invasive imaging quantification because we know that we can quantify fibrosis. Probably we know that we can quantify steatosis too, but inflammation we cannot. And it's a very interesting and important problem because among patients with NAFLD, we need to differentiate those with pure steatosis and those with steatohepatitis because different uh, uh, management. And they are encouraging uh, um, results in literature, but still it's not very, uh, uh, very good. Some uh, uh, physical and uh, uh, experimental studies show that there is a probable direct or indirect link between viscosity and inflammation. But so far, there is no way for us to measure viscosity. Here again, interesting tool, I, I, I think. Here again, work in progress and needs to be validated, but the Toshiba system provides a, a dispersion measurement of the shear wave. 
uh, based on the hypothesis that if the, the, the tissue is perfectly elastic, there is no viscosity, the slope is going to be nil. But if there is a um, certain amount of viscosity in the tissue, the slope will increase, and what the system does is measure this slope and provides a visual uh, uh, coloric representation of this uh, as a dispersion map. So you can imagine patients with exactly the same stiffness but different viscosity. This is something you cannot see with the uh, uh, sh uh, conventional shear wave measurement, but you can see with the dispersion map. And just here, uh, this is a phantom, and it's divided into two parts. The left and the two parts have exactly the same stiffness. So the, the speed or the k kilopascal are supposed to be the same. But on the left-hand side, the viscosity is not very high, and on the right-hand side, the viscosity is very high, so it's very... Uh, it's, a, it's a gel, so... Um, and if you put the probe on the, on the phantom, the speed, the speed map here is the same on the left and on the right, but you see that the system shows that there is differ difference in dispersion, so it's supposed to be a difference in, in viscosity. Here again, very interesting tool, quite unique, but needs to be uh, uh, validated uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the month or years to come. Thank you very much.